Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight we have a very special edition for you. If you were watching our live coverage of the free speech protests in Dallas last week on the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination, you saw a very articulate lady passionately laying out the case for free speech and the importance of it and the importance of standing up to censorship. At the end of that interview, I was surprised, as you were probably, to see that that was Vivian Kubrick, the daughter of film director Stanley Kubrick. Now, I've known Stanley Kubrick's films for quite some time. He's been my favorite director. It was back in college that they had a Stanley Kubrick film festival. Every week, they showed a different one of his films. And the thing that struck me about Kubrick was not only how well-crafted the films were, how they addressed really important personal and societal issues, but also how very different they were. He didn't create cookie cutter films. Now you heard that interesting one of a kind score from Full Metal Jacket. That was actually Vivian Kubrick's work. She worked very closely with her father. At a young age, as you can see in 2001, he used her as a cameo appearance. Hello. Hello. How are you, Squirt? Hello. What are you doing? Now, as I mentioned, I found out about the works of Stanley Kubrick when I was in college at a Kubrick Film Festival. Later on, I owned a chain of video stores, and we would ask people to describe why they liked films, what it was about films that they liked. We'd make those determinations if we were going to hire them, if they could explain to people and help people to find films that they liked. We also would ask them who their favorite director was. Now, most people only know one director, and that's Steven Spielberg. We were not big Steven Spielberg fans. As I mentioned about Kubrick, his films were very different from each other. Not just entertaining, but also intellectually interesting. And so if somebody mentioned that Stanley Kubrick was their favorite director, they were hired. But Vivian Kubrick is talking about the First Amendment. Very intelligently, very articulately, here's that interview. My name is Vivian Kubrick. My father was Stanley Kubrick. Uh, I live here in Dallas. And I think I have enough experience from that aspect of being Stanley Kubrick's daughter to know that there are really some things that you have to fight very hard for. And my father, as an artist, fought very hard for the, the integrity of his films because even he was subject to a lot of pressure to not make the films he made. You were talking about some of that last night over dinner. But, but uh, that's why, I mean, I know you've been interviewed before by the media. You're obviously a famous filmmaker in your own right. And I love that score that you did on Full Metal Jacket. That's my favorite ever. That's so haunting. What would your dad, I know you're taking that last question, but I'd love to know, what would your dad with his great artist mind to see real reality what would he think about what America's turned into? Because his films predicted it. Well, I, I was saying to you last night, I feel that my father was very haunted by those factions on this planet that try to manipulate humanity. I think the films that he made, he wanted people to think for themselves, experience for themselves, whatever it meant to them. But I would say that if you look at every film he made, it certainly addressed all these things that we're speaking about. I mean, Clockwork Orange, thought control, um, you know, anti-war films, the fact that war is just pure slaughter, that it's got nothing to do with any of the usual things that they send people out. Doctor Strangelove. Uh, yellow. Whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? I would say three different sheriffs came up and they, may I demonstrate on you? <laughs> they went like this. You have to look down. They literally just went mm, like that. And I said, hey, don't push me. And they said, keep moving. And I said, I am moving. And they said, turn around. And I was like going, well, I, you know, I'm walking, I'm moving. And then again, separate, two other ones, push me like that. I'm sorry, I keep okay. shoving him. And um, it just seemed to me like, why would you be so aggressive? This man is obviously a psychotic. Why can't you just say, okay, everyone, uh, you know, would you mind just going over here? Excellent on your First Amendment rights. Um, how about you stand over there? Because we've been told by Homeland Security or whoever told them that you can't be here. Like, why can't they be truthful? Why can't they be polite? Why can't they just be calm? Why do they have to be aggressive? I mean, I was doing nothing. And in fact, 
when everyone was shouting and going crazy, I mean, to be honest with you, it was all love and respect. I also felt that it's wrong to shout at the police, you slaves, you scumbags, because I, I, I feel, honestly, I feel sorry for them because I believe that, I can't believe that all of them are just dead in the head. I just can't believe that. I was actually looking at each police with my sign, sorry, with my First Amendment, and I was just trying to gently smile at them, like going, hey, this is for you too, you know. This is for everyone that you love and care about, and you too, because there isn't a police state that's ever been on this planet where everyone didn't get their ass burnt when it really got going. I mean, Hitler's regime, all the original people that were in the government or helping him, you know, in Russia, Stalin, his mates that helped him get it. I mean, you know, you think they might learn that it doesn't actually work. Tyranny just begets more tyranny until everyone's just shooting and killing each other and it's a terrible mess and then, thank God, it ends. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Dave. And uh, I personally, I'm just desperate for the things that are beautiful and wonderful and and exalted about the American people uh, it should, should reign in this country again instead of the incredibly obvious criminality that's going on here. I mean, it's like, you know, you'd have to be deaf, dumb and blind to not see what's happening. So I'm just really proud of everyone here. I don't agree that all the police are slaves. I think that they're under incredible pressure to behave. Peer pressure. Yeah, to behave in a way where I believe that at a certain point they're going to stop behaving that way. And I don't know what will happen then. I guess the National Guard or some other lunatics will come in and kick our heads in. But, I mean, you know, okay, bring it on. But the change must come. And I'm praying for it. Sure, you know, I'm not looking for physical stuff. I want them to be free and happy. But, I mean, I, I got punched in the stomach first. And, and so the, they were they was all targeted by Homeland Security now now that I'm not emotional then I gave in and like and let them be mean to me and shove some guys head over and over again into that and punch some person and, and almost knock a little girl into the ground but then they chased us around past the barricades and attacked us again no, but that's the thing is is that why do it they're peace they're supposed to be peace officers not guys being intimidating, pushing a woman who is doing nothing but, but doing what they're saying, shoving me in a way that if I was in a bar and I was six foot two and a man, I'd probably get in a fight. When do you actually take on your own ability to think for yourself, even if you're in a position where you're supposed to take orders? When's that point arrive? And that's the point that these police officers need to get to, which is why I feel sad when you guys scream at them, you slaves, you f***ers, you bastards. You know, it's like, I just, I just wish that actually, seriously, I mean, I thought about doing it and then I got shy, but I just felt like saying, listen, I don't know what you're thinking, but please stand up for what's right. They surely know what that is. We're just talking about First Amendment stuff. Are you aware of what a serious breach of security that would be? I mean, you see everything. You, you, you see the big board. What is your overall view of the state of the world, the whole world government, uh, the whole cybernetic systems, the whole technocracy? It is a turnkey takeover. What do you think the end game of the rulers are? Because everything I see them doing is trying to suppress human consciousness and awakening because they know there's an awakening happening in my view. What's your take on that? Well, actually, it just makes me think of There Will Be Blood. Uh, the, did you ever see that film? Excellent film. Right. Um, I can't remember the director's name. Say John Paul Johnson something. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I think that one has to understand that anyone that's attracted to that level of power, I think is already in a kind of disease state. Very few people would ever want to get to that level of domination, power, and to get to that place, you have to do a lot of really, I think, pretty bad things. So once those people get there, and once they get that kind of power, I, I think that that's what you're looking at is insanity. You're just looking at individuals who are insane and so um, uh, mangled in their souls that they actually have no love or appreciation for the rest of humanity and I think that is what's happening on this planet that those individuals have gotten to that level of power and I think they you know keep on going uh, like the Rockefellers I don't know how they manage to keep you know spawning 
more evil creatures uh, but you know they do and up they stay and sit on all of us and it's repeated itself so many times throughout history it's just now technology has given them a kind of uh, an omnipotence that is terrifying I think the crucial thing is is that we have to as individuals really really support the Constitution because that is the most unique Nowhere else has it really. I think maybe different countries are calling it. It's the most unique declaration of real spiritual rights. And it is a spiritual thing. I mean, how many of us, you know, have different opinions? But the bottom line is, is that real independence, freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, with a great regard to um, helping and being of service. Because I don't think, you know, people should just feel free that they can just go around and clock people on the head and go, yeah, well, I'm free. I'm going to clock people on the head. No, it's libertarian. You're free to do everything you want until it hurts somebody else or crosses onto there. But, I mean, this is like Clockwork Orange, though, because they are hiring the criminals to be the police now. What we saw today, not all of them, but, but that, 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 that key group at the middle that attacked first. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> I don't believe it. A job for two who are now of job age. The police. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I just felt really sad when I saw them turn up. I just thought, really? It's going to come to this? We're talking about the First Amendment? Uh, actually, I want to just say, is there was a New Zealand uh, TV lady that was there yesterday, and I stood behind her with my sign with the First Amendment. She said, she said oh, don't stand there, you know, you're, in the, you're blocking everything. And I said, well, I, you know, I'm just by, stand back here. And anyway, we got into a little thing over it, and she didn't want me to be in the picture with her. And she said, look, I'm not having some lunatic stand behind me with a sign. I said, lunatic? I said, I'm defending the First Amendment. You know, it's like... The assumption that to be out here expressing yourself is an act of lunacy, I would say that's a pretty good indication of how totally distorted um, uh, reality has become for the people who are supposed to be defending uh, truth. I think the important thing that you've outlining here is that people have to learn how to confront evil and not to alter it or to lessen it and to somehow you know go well I'm sure they didn't mean to push you it's like well uh, <laughs> you know you need to face you need to confront and really properly look at what's happening and not try and explain it away or give it justifications or anything because at this juncture we still by our fingernails have the chance to make a difference and turn this around and to not take part and to just watch you know I mean it's a little scary believe me I was a little scared when those sheriffs turned up but if you don't stand there and, and push back not in a stupid aggressive way but if you don't push back if you don't face it and confront it for what it is it'll just take over and then no one will be free but I think the important thing is is it's an incredible degree of insanity because only insanity would breed acts that are so destructive and harmful. And, you know, when you think of the destruction of the animals and the environment and the corporations that just seem to gaily, you know, stride forward through every decade destroying everything. Why aren't they even worried about Fukushima now when it's melting down even worse? They don't even care anymore. 91% of the reactors are leaking. Uh, insanity. Look, if you're really insane... Uh, uh, you you have no grasp or care for what's going on and i think that's what this is it's it's like organized insanity and i think people need to recognize that and and realize there's, there's a lot more sane people i would say there's probably about you know billions of sane people sure. on this planet and just a very few sure. nutters and it's those nutters that have to be regulated because obviously one can't just sort of like blow them off the face of the earth, which, you know, I wish a couple of angelic beings would come along and go, oh, you're really crazy, right? Off the planet you go. Um, but, uh, in but those bad guys are here to test us. I have no idea, but what I would really like is regulations and laws, because those work pretty well. I just really implore people to really just pull their finger out and do a little bit of work. That's your job now. Yeah. You know, it's a new job. It's not enough to be a citizen because there's too much organization to dismantle your position as a citizen. You have to do something different now. What? Oh, that's key. They're trying to dismantle our real citizenship and our machinery of freedom. And, and, and so what do we do? I think we actually have to take on, and this is the hard part, everyone, you're going to have to operate using your own 
awareness, your, yeah, your own, you have to think for yourself, and you have to dig down deep into your soul and work up enough courage to do things about it. Even if it's just you sign some petitions, you listen to Alex, you, you know, for instance, The Guardian. Um, what's his face? Uh, Glenn, uh, Gren well, Granwell. I mean, that guy... He may never, they may arrest him when he gets back to the U.S. Oh, I, I, I don't know what to say other than it's just so insane. Everybody should be rallying around him. Yes, absolutely. Edward Snowden, I love you. I think you're an incredibly brave man, and anyone who says you aren't, un that you aren't patriotic, uh, well, you're not thinking for yourself if you say he's not patriotic. I think the important part is, is that everyone, regardless of your position, regardless of whether everyone that you know thinks you're a complete extremist or lunatic, the fact is, is that when you start to think for yourself, it'll be easy to know what the right thing to do is. If you follow what you're being spoon-fed, well, I'm, you're not going to help. Well, that's it for this Wednesday, November 27th, 2013, the day before Thanksgiving. Now, tomorrow, the InfoWars staff will be at home with our families. I hope you have a day with your family and loved ones. We'll be airing three previously unaired interviews. We have an interview with Stuart Rhodes, Jordan Maxwell, and Ari Shafir. So tune in at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Happy Thanksgiving. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. <laughs> <laughs>